All right, this is second grade module three, lesson 15. And in this lesson, we are going to use some word problems to basically as our provide the context, as our reason for that concept of exchanging 100 for 10 tens or exchanging a 10 for 10 ones. So it's just a word problem, but it gives us the reason to practice that exchanging concept. So we're told that pencils come in boxes of 10. So teachers, you can see the setup here. There's our boxes of 10 uh, leading into place value. So how many boxes should Erica buy if she needs 127 pencils? So the point of these kinds of problems, teachers and parents, is we really want students to develop their understanding. And we want students to develop their own strategy for solving this problem. And it's okay if students are using a strategy that is not particularly efficient. Really, at this point, we want students to develop their understanding. Uh, efficiency will come later. So, teachers, your task is to hover and watch your students, but don't go, you don't need to jump in and teach students a faster way. Just let students. Um, develop their growth mindset, let students develop a strategy and develop their own understanding. The efficiency will come in later lessons, all right? Um, so I'm going to show one method that a student might use to solve this problem. So she has 127 pencils and we need to know how many boxes Erica should buy. So one idea might be just to count up by tens might say, okay, well, let's count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. So we have to buy um, up to 130 pencils because they always come in boxes of 10. So I'm going to say, okay, so going back here, this was... 10 pencils, this was 10 pencils, 10 pencils, 10 pencils, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10, all right? And so the question is, how many boxes did we buy? Well, we bought one, two, well, 10 boxes, because I put them in a group of 10 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ah, she needs to buy 13 boxes. All right, that's one way to do it. There are other ways. Another way a student might have done it is might have used um, I got distracted there. <laughs> might have used like the place value discs, and then they might say, "Well, this is a hundred, and this is ten, and this is ten, and then these are ones, one, 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 one. One, one, and the student might use logic and say, well, this hundred can be cashed in for ten tens. And then the student might say, well, there's ten tens plus two more tens, so that's twelve tens. Plus, we don't have quite enough, but that's a thirteenth ten. Um, so that's another idea that is, some students might have used. So the idea is, just get the answer, developing some sort of strategy. Uh, don't worry about the efficiency. And then second part, well, how many pencils will Erica have left over after she gets the 127 pencils that she needs? Well, students would need to recognize that those 13 boxes is 130 pencils. And if we needed 127, even though this is not the time for formalized subtraction and all that sort of stuff, we want students to recognize that she would have three pencils left over. Are students going to use subtraction, formalized subtraction, to get that answer? No, they're probably just going to use logic, or they might count on their fingers 27, 28, 29, 30, and, and get the answer um, three. And the last question, how many more pencils does she need to have 200 pencils? So I'm going to start off with the idea that she currently has 130 pencils because she bought 13 boxes. 
And if we want to know, well, how many more pencils does she need to get to uh, 200? Well, 130. And then we could say 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200. So the idea would be, well, she needed to buy 10, another 10, another 10, another 10, another 10, another 10, and another 10. So how many more pencils does she need to buy? Well, she needs to buy 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Oh, so she needs 70 more pencils. All right. Now, is this the only technique a student might use? No way. There's other techniques that a student might use. Some might use subtraction. Some might just do it in their head. Some might. Some students might use the empty number line. There's just tons of different ways. And teachers, your task is to do your best to stay out of the way and allow students the, the productive struggle time and allow students that to develop that growth mindset that given time and your own faith in students, that the students will be able to get there. And that wraps up second grade module three, lesson 15, where we are just using word problems as the context for the exchanging process.